All right. What's up? What's up, guys? This is Ben Nauman. Welcome to the Flip Texas podcast. Today, I am excited to be here with the lovely Fatima. Um, what's going on, Fatima? How are you today? I'm uh, good. And yourself? Good, good. Busy, busy weekend. Busy weekend. Always, um, definitely always problems to solve, but it looks like for yourself as well, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we received some applications during the weekend. We're going to be sending pre-approvals, helping people buying houses. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. I, a lot of times I like to ask, um, I like to ask lenders and agents like what's going on on their end so I can feel like I'm staying like in tune with, with kind of like what's going on because mm -hmm. um, I know it's very important. Um, you know, what's going on on the lending side as well? Right? Well, the market's still busy. Like even though prices are like continue rising like over the time when the pandemic hit, everything like going up and up and up. The difference that we're having right now is the interest rate are rising too. So, but still we have a busy market. We still have a lot of buyers out there buying houses. A lot of people still looking for certain communities, certain specific areas they want to live around Texas. So there's still a busy market. Okay, perfect, perfect. Well, I have, I have a couple questions. Um, maybe, maybe more than a couple if you're okay with that. <laughs> um, but first, I have a personal question. Okay. I want to know, what was it like coming to the U.S.? Because you're not you're not always from the U.S., right? No. Um, and like how you know maybe what was it like coming to the U.S.? Mm -hmm. Pros and cons, mm -hmm. and um, and how that made your way into the real estate world, kind of too. Okay, well that's a very personal <laughs> question. <laughs> but yeah, um, well it was a uh, really nice. It was a uh, restart, if you okay. wanna say it like that. I moved here back in 2014 uh -huh. and I had to leave behind not only my country, I had to leave behind my friends, my family, my career, everything and start all over again. So uh, this was a, a restart, start from zero in a different country with a different language. So I had to manage myself to learn English um, and then I guess like everything in like uh, progress. Uh -huh. So um, at the beginning it was really hard. I was working as a waitress on a restaurant and I had to like clean up floors and all that, all the stuff that you never in your life thought that you were gonna do. Really? Yeah, so yeah, I had to start from that. But um, what I will say to people that move to a different country or a country like US is like, the more people you know, the more connected you're gonna be, and these people will help improve in your life. So help improve your improve your life. Yeah. So to me, it was like I started meeting people, and they were like referring me to other opportunities. So I went to from being a waitress to work in a different place where I was like having a better job, an office job. I was making more money, and then from that, everything was improving. Okay. So um, during my whole life, I've been working in sales. So that's pretty much like I do. I've been doing sales for like 11 years already. All wow. different kind of sales. So to me, it's like the process is, is basically the same. You just change the product. So I have sold from uh, pharmaceuticals to cars to houses. And now that I'm in real estate, this is what I like. I like uh, selling houses, loans and at the end is helping people helping people to achieve their dreams to educate them because many people can qualify or they can buy a house but they somebody told them at some point they couldn't so yeah. they stay there so i i love when i come across with those people and actually help them buy a house really i love yeah. that mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of people are almost like too yeah, kind of like maybe in their own way and mm -hmm. they're not like, um, you know, maybe they're like scared to walk into or maybe they feel like you have to walk into like the bank and like to chase or Bank of America mm -hmm. and like ask them, hey, can I get a home loan or yeah. I don't know um, to the and it goes back into why I think it's really important 
is I looked at a statistic the other day. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've probably looked at this a while back as well. And it was talking about the net average net worth of a renter versus a homeowner. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to like, if you're able to help get someone into a home, that's life changing, right? I mean, like, yeah. I think it was like the average net worth of someone say under, I think it was average net worth of someone under 35 who is a renter versus a homeowner. It was, I think the average renter was like $17,000 net worth. Mm -hmm. Or maybe le or may I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was way less. Yeah. That, I think that was probably a higher age range too. Mm -hmm. And then the average homeowner net worth was like, you know, way more. Ten x or something. Yeah, because they now when you're a homeowner you own an asset, so that increases your net worth right there. Yeah. Instead, like being a renter, like you don't have anything that's to stand for, so you just pay rent or like. The only network will be whatever money you have in securities, you're having on saving accounts and other things like that. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, not many people can afford to have all those things or like have a big bank account. And if you have a big <laughs> bank account and you don't have a house, then you need to get a house. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so, I don't know, it, I feel like it's just so much less risk than like other things. Yes. Um, I know it's people are like really big onto like Bitcoin right now and like mm -hmm. all these things and like overnight, you know, it can go down like 50%, but I feel like that's, or I know that, you know, your house value is not going to go down 50% overnight. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it actually, it did the opposite. Like average person like bought a house in 2018, uh -huh. they may have profit like 100,000, 150,000 from that point to now. So yeah, investing in real estate is really, really, really good idea. I guess depending on like what the their their price point of their house is too. Yeah. I tell people that they don't even when they when people say oh you know it's three per say if you calculate conservatively like for Houston say this is very mm -hmm. conservative we do a lot more than this but say mm -hmm. if you put said five five percent appreciation mm -hmm. you're not even making five percent appreciation on your money. Mm -hmm. You're making 5% appreciation on the property value. Mm -hmm. And so you're making like way more because you only put, say, if you have an FHA loan, yeah. which we can talk about, and you put 3.5% down, mm -hmm. you're making like way more than 5% on the appreciation because of the, it's on, it's not on the, your down payment, it's on the value of the house. Of the house, exactly. So it's a larger number of where you're, yeah, you're profiting into, yes. Okay, so we are gonna talk about the Dave Ramsey debate right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So why, why is Dave Ramsey wrong about advising first time homeowners? Um, he's, he says specifically that you should wait until you have 20% down payment to ever purchase a property. He says that you should buy on a 15 year fixed mortgage. Mm -hmm. A lot of investors right now have a hard time cash flowing much on a 15 year mortgage and obviously a 15 year mortgage is going to, you know, it's going to pay down quicker, but it's going to raise that, mm -hmm. it's going to raise that payment. Yeah. And um, I think that's very, it's, it's important to think about, we can discuss about it, mm -hmm. but we and Fatima were talking about it. And I mean, do you think it's in the best, in people's best interest to wait until they have a 20% down payment on the average home? No, no, it's definitely not. I mean, there's a reason why uh, these programs are out. Actually, you can buy a house with as low as 3% down payment for a conventional loan and 3.5% down payment on an FHA. So, the reason why the government came up with this is like more people can afford to buy houses. Mm -hmm. So like how long will it take you to get 20% down payment? Mm -hmm. How long will it take you to save all the money in your bank account when you can buy a house with a 3% down payment? I mean, it, the, it the, waiting, more... the, the waiting period makes it... What's going to happen in three years? What's gonna exactly. happen? The the what's gonna happen if we wait three years? Yeah, we'll be in a better like financial spot, mm -hmm. right? Because you save that money. But you tell me what's gonna happen in three years. The houses are gonna cost more. 
<laughs> Boom. Then there's your big twenty yeah. percent down payment. Now you have to keep saving. I keep saving. I keep saving. And if you wait all that time, you will never buy a house. Shit. <laughs> yeah, no. I think my advice will be like, yes, the way the market it is right now, you do need to have money saved. You need to have money in your bank account you have to have money not only for your down payment but your closing costs okay. because your closing costs are all these other uh, costs associated with the loan prepaid and all that taxes fees all this stuff so you have to have that money in your bank account and even a little bit more reserve maybe well reserves is good mm -hmm. but the the thing like I see with a lot of my buyers is they're having hard times to get their offers accepted okay. because even though the house uh, might, might be listed let's say for 300000 but there's like other 20 people mm -hmm. that want to get the same house so it comes down to who offers more who give me the highest and best so even though the house is listed for 300000 they may end up buying it for 310, 315, 320. So okay. usually listing agents, they get a lot of offers and usually they are above asking price. Okay. So yeah, definitely you need to have money, but you don't have to have 20% down payment to get into a house. And I think that we all think that's ideal. I mean, yeah, that'd be great, but yeah, that maybe it's not, you know, you shouldn't, because if you wait until if you wait until everything's perfect, everything's like perfect, this place is 10 out of 10, a lot of times you don't wanna wait for, mm -hmm. you don't wanna be one of those people that you're waiting on like the perfect storm to happen because a lot of times there's never the perfect time for anything. There's a good, there's like a good time, but um, you know, there's never a perfect time. I've heard people say that about, about, diff about different things in, in life. Um, mm -hmm. But also, um, also, I mean, I think it is, it, I do appreciate that Dave says, you know, you should be, um, you know, you should be responsible and that's good too, because, you know, you shouldn't be getting a mortgage that you can't afford. But today, correct me if I'm wrong, today, you don't really see people get, you don't really see the lenders allow people to get mortgages that they can't, that they can't afford. We're not doing, we don't get adjustable. A lot of times when, when Dave Ramsey, um, went, um, you know, essentially went out, went bankrupt the first time, he got these 90 day loans. And so the reason why he's conservative is because he went bankrupt. And so he bought these, he had these 90 day loans, he was fixing them and flipping properties with 90 day loans. And then that lender actually sold the note, he couldn't get an extension on his 90 day loan and the market, you know, shot way down. But we're talking about houses that we're not planning on selling soon. We're talking about fixed rate mortgages. So um, I definitely think it's pretty conservative. So mm -hmm. back to that topic, you're not really seeing, like obviously in 2008, people were getting approved a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the underwriting, I mean, people are basically getting mortgages they have to afford now, right? Yes, yes, and that's, uh, we, do the, we do this all the time, huh? every single day. You, you have to qualify according to your income and debts for a payment because at the end of the day you qualify for a payment you don't qualify for a um they say an amount and a specific amount because sometimes you can have a house that is three hundred thousand and then you have another one that is three fifty but the three fifty thousand dollar houses pay less taxes or let's say the insurance is cheaper but there are many factors that will contribute to the payment but at the end of the day we qualify buyers on the payment um, it's going, the payment is going to be determined between your income and your debts. Okay, okay. Perfect, perfect. Well, that, um, interesting, I like it. Yeah, not everybody will qualify. Um, they say they, if you have issues, like, or you don't know how to qualify, just go to the professional go to a real estate agent, go to a loan officer. That, that's the first thing you need to do if you are thinking of buying a house. And sometimes you might not be ready, but this person can put you in the right direction when like maybe three months, six months, a year, two years down the road, you can actually be ready to buy a house. What kind of advice advices do you give some of these people like 
oh hey listen like you might need to get like sometimes is it sometimes like painful conversations like mm -hmm. oh man like you know you might need to you know um, get a cheaper car payment or like you might need to like de or like you might need to make more money or is it sometimes like kind of like uh, awkward conversations or like what do you yeah. some of the things you tell these people it would be awkward if you make it <laughs> awkward i mean to me it's like regular conversation sometimes if you need you want to buy a house then you will have to have this conversation with people like hey don't go get a new car or if you have this car that you're co-signing with your son your brother your wife whoever it is try to refinance it on their name so you can take that debt out of your credit or like there other stuff like hey uh, sometimes even though you you have uh you don't have debts but then your income is very small can you bring a co-signer can you bring somebody that can help you qualify for more money or like can you get another job and they can pay you a little bit more because with this current job you have you won't be able to buy a house so there are things that can be done um on like credit wise co-signer like okay. refinancing so there's that's that's why it's so important to go with the professional. Okay. Don't go to your neighbor. <laughs> Don't go to your best friend. Uh, Don't well, Bobby go... told me. Oh my God. Bobby yeah. told me like, uh, you know, just don't even, I can't get qualified. He, he said, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, but perfect. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm glad. Um, okay. So that leads into my next question. Yes. What in 2022, maybe people make it more complicated than it is. How do you buy a house with a co-signer? With a co-signer. A co-signer could be any person. Okay. okay? Uh, it's usually a relative or like say your fiance or somebody that is uh, close to you. Okay. okay? So the co-signer might live or might not live in the property. So there are two types of co-signers. So there's the one that is going to live with you and there's the one that it might be your parent and they live in another state or they, mm -hmm. live, they have their own house. So they can still contribute and help you to get qualified for that loan. Uh -huh. So when we when we take the cosigner in consideration, we're gonna ask for the same requirements. We're gonna ask for like income documents, assets. We're gonna check their credits and we're gonna account for their debts and everything else. So um, and the other thing is like you can have one more than one cosigner. Is that something? <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, yes. Shoot, that's so, crazy. Yeah. Um, well, it, it will it will depend on the family, but I have had loans that we have mom, dad, and, and son, so they can <laughs> actually find something that is suitable for the family. Um, uh, like they're all living together or no? Yeah, they're all living okay. together. And sometimes, because some people, they're afraid, like, oh, I will go sign for you, but then I want to buy my own house, then I won't mm -hmm. be able to. Uh -huh. But that's not true. If you co-sign for somebody on a house, mm -hmm. and then this person, let's say, I help you to buy your house. And oh, you're wow, gonna... I appreciate it. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It might be the other way around. You can help me in my mind, but it's okay. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> okay, let's buy a house together. <laughs> okay, as okay. long as it's in a good, good area. Maybe the Heights. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I, like, I like the Heights. Yeah, yeah. I could live there. <laughs> so, um, so the thing is, like, let's say you help me okay. buy a house. Okay. You're my co-signer. Okay. But I'm the one living there. And the one making the payment. Okay. And then a year from now, two years from now, you say, Fatima, I want to buy my own house. Um, I have concerns whether I will qualify as a first time with buyer since I co sign for you on this loan. You can definitely do it. You will qualify as a first time home buyer as long as I can prove that I'm the one making the payment. So that wow. liability can be a slip for your debt completely. So, so I can write, so even if I'm guaranteeing. Um, even if I'm guaranteeing this loan, I can, when I say I want to go buy another property in a year from now, I can write it off on my DTI that someone else is making. Exactly, payment. yes. You will need me to give you 12 bank statements showing that I'm the one making the payments, that the payments for the house are coming out of my account, then we can see that. Bit. Well, we just took care of all the excuses. <laughs> I mean, um, I think that's definitely so that's definitely a great option like even when um i'm thinking about say say my son or my daughter is like college age mm -hmm. 
and um, say say their college age. I mean, it's it would be incredible, you know, to help them get a property when they're you know when they're younger. Um, maybe even you know maybe even they have the property like say they're going to college at yeah, mm -hmm. Texas Texas A&M is pretty mm -hmm. big around here so say you help them get a, pro like a house near Texas A&M hopefully they're not too crazy mm -hmm. they don't like burn the place down yeah. <laughs> if, make sure they're a good kid but um, then they get their friends they get their friends to come live in the house with mm -hmm. them their friends all pay them rent yeah um, so and that's basically they live Run free. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so now that you mentioned something about college, there's something very, very interested on this subject. Ooh, that okay. Do you know that you can buy a house right after college? Like, right I think after. I heard a, I think I heard a story, but I'm not, but tell me about this. Yeah. It's something like, I heard a story, it sounded kind of crazy, mm -hmm. but you like literally just are you talking about showing like a letter from your job that says, hey, I'm going to make this much or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or what are you talking about? Yes. Um, yeah. Let's say you went to college. You studied for four or five years. Mm -hmm. You got your degree. Okay. And now you have your job offer, your first job offer. With that, we can qualify you because usually what we need to qualify a buyer is two years of job history. Okay. But you weren't working because you were at college. But since you were preparing yourself for something else during four years, mm -hmm. we can account that time that you used to get prepared for a professional career as a job history. Really? So yes, so you can qualify. I hope right. y'all are listening. Yes, you can qualify right after college. Imagine like being 22, 23, 24 years old. You go your first job and you right away can buy a house. That would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, I hope, you know, I hope that people don't go out and get like a million dollar house for their first house right <laughs> out of college. But but um, that's super cool though. That's in, the quicker you're able to 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 get going on some of these yeah. these properties is awesome. Yeah, I mean, you still have to take care of your credit. It's not yeah. like, yeah, um, yeah, we still have to account for how much money you're making yeah. and how much uh, debt you have. So it's not like, oh yeah, I graduated college and granted a house. <laughs> you still have to qualify and just uh, with the college thing we can avoid the two-year history but okay. we're still gonna take in consideration your debt and this is really good for like college kids because sometimes they don't take care much about their credit <laughs> like oh yeah I got a $500 credit card do I have to pay it <laughs> <laughs> oh I've been spending all on the beer and yeah, wine exactly and they forget to make at least a minimum payment but yeah you still have to pay your credit card uh, that happens a lot like okay. you take your yeah. finances seriously since you're young I hear a lot of people um, a lot of people are also like really concerned with like student loans for some reason but I mean if it's like obviously that it would just be it would just be calculated into your DTI if you have yeah something it like will that. it will for FHA we can take a half a percentage of the total amount of debt so let's say um, you owe like ten thousand dollars um, well ten thousand is it's very few. <laughs> very minimal let's say you owe like a hundred thousand dollars so okay. we're gonna take well, we yeah, i must have gone, have, to, I must have gone to attorney school yeah the bar. well you'll be surprised okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it depends i mean it depends on, on the person uh but yeah we take uh, half of a percentage of that as a payment unless you have a framing agreement already so okay. if you have a payment agreement then we're gonna go through that uh, payment agreement that you have. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, I have another question before I forget. Mm -hmm. In 2022, a lot of people are self-employed. A lot okay. of real estate agents, a lot of real estate investors, mm -hmm. um, my contractors, um, even a team, you know, some team members that I have. A team member of mine was asking about, before we just did this video, mm -hmm. about, you know, how do you purchase a house in 2022 when you're self-employed is there is it possible is there other things you know you need to look mm -hmm. out for yeah well there is a variety of programs okay so when we think about a loan we always think about fha conventional loans but there is all kind of programs if you want to qualify for a traditional loan fha or conventional you will be you will have to be able to show at least two years of income taxes doing the same activity 
So let's say you're a realtor, you've been a realtor for two years, so, and you have your Schedule C, and then we're gonna go based on what you, uh, to say your line number 31, so why you pay after all the discounts. So why you claim after, as your income, okay. af, after you discount everything. Okay. So when you're doing your Schedule C, there are things that we can add back to your income, like depreciation we can depletion those things we can add back to your income and also we can consider like 25 percent of the mileage that you drive for business we can add that back on your income okay so, so about a hundred thousand miles <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, you get a good tax person <laughs> help you qualify but yes we need two years of taxes tax returns schedule c if you're a uh, self-employed 1099 if you have your company it will be the k1 so yeah and even if you let's say you were working as a 1099 or you were working uh you were filing a schedule c one year and then the next year you decided to open your llc or your corporation mm -hmm. and this year you have a k1 we can still use it mm -hmm. as long as you're doing the same activity okay Mm -hmm. So what if we have some of these people where maybe they're um, maybe they're making three hundred thousand or two hundred fifty thousand or whatever, and then they're writing off most of their income, and they're in. I've, I mean, I'm not. I've definitely heard of some of the biggest people in this mm -hmm. country. You know, their 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 top line says a million dollars, two million, a billion, mm -hmm. and um, I know Donald Trump has even showed. Um, on his, what's it called? On your, on, basically on your net, on your net income, mm -hmm. a loss that year. Yeah. Um, I hear a rumor that there are people that are getting uh, what's called like bank statement loans. Is yes. there another option for self-employed people where mm -hmm. maybe it only shows they make twenty five thousand, fifty thousand, seventy five thousand, hundred thousand, mm -hmm. or what if it shows negative fifty thousand on their on their return i'm just saying yeah uh, is there do you, what's the other option for them is there like a bank statement thing yeah or? that's another option this uh it's a bank statement loan or portfolio loans or no qn loans that we call uh you can qualify for this kind of loans uh we will go based on what you deposit you can do it on like 12 months or 24 months obviously the most that you can like uh provide as a proof of like constant deposit the better will be for you uh, the down payment on this program is a little higher. It's usually 10 to 20% depending on credit. Uh, you have to take care of your credit, right? regardless the program that you're going. Mm -hmm. Like I, I will say, because the minimum to qualify for a FHA loan is 580, but <laughs> you're like, what? Come, I mean, come <laughs> like, on, what? I mean, there should be no excuses. I mean, yes. like, I mean, that's, that's not even good credit. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, you don't have to have perfect credit either. But um, yeah, I will advise you to take uh, care of your credit, especially if you're going with this special program, you have to show your worth. You have to show that even though you are like claiming losses on your tax return, you still have money saved. You still have good credit. You still have other factors that will contribute to get your proof for loan. Okay, like, oh, uh, maybe I have like a life insurance policy with some money in it or some stocks or some other assets somewhere else or yeah like... we, we take that in consideration as a research asset or like even people uh this is another thing people they have 401ks they've been working in the same company for years and they've been taking all this money and they're like oh they're used to that but they don't know that they can actually use that as a down payment for their houses so there's literally no excuses that's interesting. So you're saying you can take your money out of your 401k to use it as a down payment on your house? Yes. I mean, I, I, I think that as long as the penalties aren't, it's probably not a crazy amount of penalties, but the return that you're going to get on your personal residence, it's going to be so much better than like your 401k. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you should do both. Yeah. You should, you shouldn't just do one, like one, one investment. I mean, you should do like Multiple. You know, multiple, whether it's multiple properties or multiple, like, hey, so I'm going to do the stock market, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that. It probably shouldn't be 
it's not mm -hmm. like you're just building a, a wealth in one house. Yeah, you know? exactly. You like use different baskets. Okay, different <laughs> baskets, different baskets. Put your eggs on these. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. What do um what questions do you, any other questions that you think people need to like know about in 2022 here? Well, when you talk about loans, there are like many, many questions. There are many, many situations, different situations. People that are married, that are getting divorced, that uh, just can't move to, to the country. They are relocating from other states to Texas. So there's plenty, plenty of questions. It will come to like the individual. Like okay. what's your particular situation? situation? What are you going through? So I would say more than other questions, like down payment is one of the ones that we get uh, asked a lot, like how much I need. Uh, credit, we talk about like 580 is the minimum. Um, job history, two years. But even though like if you had a gap on employment due to COVID or any other uh, circumstances, you can still, there are ways around it. But I guess my my advice to everybody is just to go talk to the professional. Don't talk to your neighbor. Talk to the professional. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk to uh, Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. Yeah, don't talk to Bobby. Like, go talk to the professional. Get a real estate agent. Get a loan officer. Because we are going to work with you and for you to get you to buy your house. Incredible. Incredible. When you, for the average investor, say the average investor, a lot of people, they they come to like, they come to our meetups that say mm -hmm. at Flip Texas, or they hit me up on Facebook, and they're saying, Ben, like, help me get into real estate. But a lot of them, they don't have, you know, they, they, they like the idea of being in real estate, but they're not, they're working a job right now. They're working a great job. Maybe they like what they're doing. Maybe they don't and they don't have 40 hours a week to get into like flipping or wholesaling or something like that mm -hmm. and a lot of times i would probably just refer them to what you were speaking to me about the other day with the um the small multi-unit properties maybe where yeah. you where you kind of just buy one property the next year you buy another property because if you're picking up you know even five to 10 properties from the age of, you know, say even like 25 to 35, and you know, you come out at 35 and you have 10 properties. I mean, that's pretty, pretty, can be pretty life-changing. Yeah, yeah. Well, what a lot of people don't know is that uh, when we think about our primary residence or first house, it will have to be like a single family, condo, townhome, just one unit. But um, the residential loans, they can go to up to four units. So that's basically what you say, small multifamily. You can buy a duplex, triplex, fourplex with an FHA loan, and you will still qualify to buy this property with the 3.5% down. But this has to be your primary residence. That means you had to live in there. Okay. That's where you're going to live. We said we're not. I'm not gonna. We're not an attorney. We're not recommending. Yeah. We're not recommending any laws yeah. here. And I'm not. I'm not gonna ask you how mm -hmm. how long we have to live in the fourplex or the duplex. No. Okay. So you. So you just. You have to live in the duplex or yes. the fourplex, and then. You can rent out the other units. Can we use? Can we use some of this income from potential income from the fourplex? Yes. To qualify for that, because a lot of people like may not think. Hey, it's a five hundred thousand dollar fourplex. I don't think I can qualify for that. I only make mm -hmm. seven. I make seventy thousand a year. Yes, yes, yes. You can use the potential rental income of those other units that you will have. Let's say, uh, if you have a fourplex, so mm -hmm. you can use the average rent for those other three units. We take a consideration seventy five percent of that. We don't take the hundred percent. 75% because okay. if we account for a 
a vacancy factor. Yeah, main mm -hmm. or maintenance or kind of. Yeah, or vacancy factor because let's say you had a tenant and then they left and then it took it took you like two or three months to get a new one. So. Dang, yeah, not on top, not on top of their game. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. Yes, exactly. You just get good tenants so they can pay rent every month. But yes, you can qualify, you can use that income. Not only we're still gonna use your personal income because one unit is gonna be for you and we, we have to account everything in consideration, but yes, you can use the future income as a qualifying income. Okay. I just thought of something. So you see, you see these people every day, um, you know, every day people are sending you applications you're helping them and everything like that. What is the average, you told me about the average loan people are getting now, mm -hmm. you know, home values are going up. So if you wait, if you wait, you know, the prices might probably keep mm -hmm. keep going up. Yes. But say, I think you said the average is like 300, some 320 maybe now yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing as the average income people are like qualifying with for these like property 300 price range? Well, and it the, depends if they're with their wife, I guess with the significant other or not, but... No, I mean, let's say to qualify for a $300,000 house, mm -hmm. maybe if you make like around 60000 you can qualify, but it will depend on your debt yeah. more than everything. Okay. Because you can make 100000 yeah. But then you have your car payment, you have wow. your wife payment, you have student loans, you have eight credit cards, and they're all maxed out. So then your debt is, is way higher. My, my, my Audi RA payment's about 1200 a month, so. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can just like uh, forget about that one. You know what you can do? No, I'm playing. What, okay. what can I do? <laughs> what can I do? You, um, okay, because you're an investor. Okay. okay. I'm guessing you have your LLC. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is your LLC paying for your car? Currently, my LLC is not paying for my car. Well, but I was, uh, so I've had my car for a while. Um, I've had my car for like, this car for like maybe, actually maybe five years. I got a, I got a brand, I got a brand new. And so it's almost paid up already. Uh, yeah, something like that. And so, um, you're, but I had thought about that, like, okay, next car I get, I should put in my LLC name. So you're saying yes. that's, you're saying the reason of that is it's not going to be like counted against my personal. Exactly. If you can show, even if the car is on your personal credit, mm -hmm. but then the payment is coming out of your LLC, we can, you need to show 12 months of his history, making that payment out of your LLC account. And then we can uh, eliminate that obligation from you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm taking I'm gonna take notes, notes. Go back and watch this video. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, but even though like I I will guess like your car is almost paid off, so that's another right thing. If you are financing a car or you have an installment loan, so installment loan is something that you pay a fixed amount for a fixed period of time. Okay. Okay. So if you have an installment loan and you have less than ten payments remaining. Mm -hmm. We can still exclude that debt. So, okay. yeah. So really? Probably, yeah. Less than 10 months remaining. Okay. Yeah. This is a lot of information yeah. what I'm giving you today. I think you're yeah. going to have to <laughs> watch this video for <laughs> two or three times so you can have it all. I'm recording myself. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, giving away too, we're giving away too many secrets here. Yeah. All right. So, how do the people reach you? How do they work with you? Well, the best way to reach me is through my phone, my personal phone. It's a... Uh... Oh, wow, you're brave. Yeah, I'm brave. <laughs> I'm brave. Oh, well. I don't know until how long I will get that one, but yeah. <laughs> I'm brave. Um, my name, my name, my phone <laughs> is 305-834-9298. 305-834-9298. I still have my Florida number. <laughs> I will change it. Perfect, perfect. Well, maybe after this video, I will... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Florida trip sounds pretty nice right about now. Yeah, no, no. No, but that's the best way to communicate with me, uh, 305-834-9298. You can also follow me on Instagram. I'm very active on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is Fatima underscore lender. Uh, yeah, that's it. Even, like, I'm very good on, on Instagram. Like, people sometimes text me or reach out to me there. 
So yeah, that will be another option. Okay, perfect. All right, well, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you for inviting me. And just to let you all know, we are officially back. We have a good amount of events coming up here this year. Um, look forward to seeing y'all at a future event. Make sure to give us a like, subscribe, give us a comment on who you want to see in Texas that is doing great things in the real estate business here and who we should bring on. Uh, see y'all soon.